The Florida Panthers lock up their future second line center in Anton Lundell with a six year contract extension. We're going to discuss how Lundell has gotten here since being drafted 12th overall in the 2020 draft and how well that contract could look in the upcoming years. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Friday, July 5th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. I'm Armando Velez from the Hockey News. You can follow me on X at Monoman12, follow show account on X and Instagram at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And shout out to the everydayers who come back here and get your daily Florida Panthers fix. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms and conditions apply. So, Cats fans, I want to first of all say that I hope you all had a great 4th of July holiday, however you chose to spend it. And great to be back at my home base after a few days of traveling uh, out of, of state, which, uh, which for me, it was great to recharge some of the batteries re- during during the holiday and also <laughs> doing some free agency work in, in, in between all of that. And a lot got done since the last time we have spoken to you here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. And here discussing all of this on a Friday, which means it is a Fairbanks Friday edition of the show. Nick Fairbanks is back here with the big news of the of the of the last few days with Nick. Your boy, Anton Lindell, getting a six-year extension worth $30 million, a an AAV of $5 million for the next six years. So what a way for you, for, for you to appear on this podcast, us talking about this big extension for the Cats coming off their Stanley Cup run. So with that, I want to say welcome to the show. Thank you, Armando. And uh, I'm glad to hear that you're able to get away, get your batteries charged, because here in South Florida... It's been all Panthers talk. It's been free agency. It's been where the cup is at, uh, who's signing, who's going elsewhere. You can definitely tell it's Panther fever down here or cat scratch mm-hmm. fever down here. So uh, glad to be back, especially on this episode, because as uh, president of the Lundell Fan Club, we are very happy to have him. Absolutely. So it's, once again, it's a six-year $30 million contract, $5 million AAV. It's crazy because going into this, off season, I was thinking, okay, bridge deal, three point five at most for the next three, and then maybe you have a, a, just over north of two million to spend here in the, in the next uh, in the rest of free agency for the Panthers. But nope, it's not like that for Bill Zito and company. And just when you win a Stanley Cup, obviously your perspective changes uh, and and on all. And like I spoke about with Jacob, they've identified their core, but we even said this even before the extension for. And I was saying, OK, the Panthers could take their time still. But also this signals that the fact that they're not going to be using LTIR too. Uh, Paul Murray said that even after the after the Stanley Cup final, there's no major surgeries uh, for the guys on the on the roster. Obviously, things can change from now until then. You could be up to 10 percent over the cap uh, during the offseason as long as you get it down to 88 uh, by the time of tra- by the end of training camp. So. This signals with the way the Panthers are spending, they're not going to be they're not going to be uh, utilizing LTIR. But for this, the fact that they were able to get three five million for the next six with how the cap is going to be appreciate this signals long long term. This is their future second line center. It really does, and it, it really shows the faith that the Panthers brass have in Lundell. Not that they haven't had it since you know he came into. Uh, the league or even started with the Panthers. Uh, you know, he was drafted 12th overall for a reason. And on top of that, he was given such responsibility defensively, even starting with the Panthers. So uh, it's great to see him get rewarded mostly for his postseason success. I'll say uh, there are still some questions about his regular season play and putting up uh, points, but you know, um, I think that's going to come. And I think it comes to playing with a regular you know, line and also playing with people who actually are there to score. It's very hard when you maybe are only used to playing with one winger and then you have a constant rotation with another winger who's 
not known to score too much and that you're just there for shutting down other lines. So um, it's going to be awesome to see what he's able to do eventually, um, either with, you know, uh, Rodriguez, uh, a Kachuk or a Verhage on that second line. And we'll definitely see, hopefully, that his point totals will definitely go up and he'll be more of an offensive force along with the defensive um, capabilities that he already possesses. Yeah, and he, let's not also not forget that he had a chance at seven, second line center when Bennett was out uh, for, for mm-hmm. a little while right before he came back in uh, game three of, of the Boston series too. So that was a little bit of needed to step up when necessary. And let's not forget he was always he's always been the guy to step up one line in case there was an injury to the top uh, top two centers for the Panthers. And also quietly for Anton Lindell, I mean. Five points in the Stanley Cup final, two for him. 54 games under his belt, 28 points, a plus 10 for him. Uh, not, and also with uh, some clutch moments, too. I mean, you think about the drop pass to Nico Mikola in game two of the of the final, the de facto game-winning goal in, uh, in, in game five of the Eastern Conference final, the primary mm-hmm. in game six uh, to Vladimir Tarasenko, even game six against Boston where they're – Bringing it up the ice, the Panthers aren't necessarily um, playing well. The give and go with Gustav Forsling shoots uh, with a save, and then um, Gustav Forsling uh, knocks it in too. Two points in that game for 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 Anton Lindell. So we we've also seen a little bit of maturity in his game. Not all, even when he was off of that line too, taken off once Bennett was healthy. We've seen uh, we've seen Anton Lindell make make plays, and also for him too. I mean, he's he's dealt, he's improved his faceoff percentage by almost nine percent this season. He's doubled the amount of hits too for uh, <laughs> coming into this season. Yeah, the like you said, the regular season numbers don't necessarily reflect. I mean, also think about last year for him. He was getting used to a new coaching staff for him too. So that why that's a little bit of the dip in the production uh, too. You'll see the plus minus numbers in the 2022 season, the President's Trophy winning season. Uh, the the higher than the than the last two but let's also not forget the type of the style that the panthers were playing and how they were outscoring their issues so that's not necessarily a reflection 100 percent of his play in the last two years of how the 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 main responsibility of his game is defense and the anticipation for him is to eventually grow that offensive game and also let's not forget Game two of the Stanley Cup final, the goal that that Evan Rodriguez scored, that was on the second power play, and then that that one in the clincher was just off a of power play to um, off a of power play, even though it with the second unit on. So we've seen a little bit of maturity there on special teams for him. We know that mm-hmm. he's going to be one of the top units on the on the PK unit, but eventually this is a little bit of growth for him to eventually evolve into power play one. It's not going to be immediate for for him, but this is this is a little bit of that slowly you're slowly starting to graduate definitely and i i will say this about anton is that he's actually kind of rounded the curve a little bit faster than somebody i would say about alexander barkoff um you know it took barkoff i'll say probably eight almost nine seasons for him to buy in to start hitting somebody you know actually going in and finishing a check Whereas Anton Lundell, he's been kind of forced into this kind of role and he's actually kind of, you know, embraced it uh, because he had probably the most effective third line, in my opinion, over the last two uh, playoff uh, runs, Uh, you know, whether that was just him or his line mates of, you know, Reinhardt and uh, Losterainen. But, you know, it, it just goes to show again that he's bought into the system. He believes in what Paul Maurice is preaching, um, which is huge because a lot of young guys may just want to play their own game and just, you know, go for stats. But, you know, I think he understands exactly what the team is there for, what they're trying to accomplish, and he's all there for it. Uh, One thing I will say uh, about him getting power play time, as you said, it won't be, you know, first, you know, at the beginning of the year. But I think as the season goes on, as they want to get different looks and everything, uh, he's definitely going to be one of those guys who uh, is going to be able to facilitate along the uh, sideboards there and uh, definitely be a distributor of the puck. So uh, can't wait to see that and can't wait to see uh, how this may affect other positions or other moves that the Panthers may have to think about in the future. Yeah, def- definitely for, um, have have a lot to think about. And for Anton Lundell, really for him starting to mature in, into his game, basically 
in that second round series last year against uh, to the Toronto Maple Leafs where Reinhardt was on his line. But even we've seen even without uh, Reinhardt on his on his line, how he's able to elevate his game more. And thanks to those beginning uh, stages in the postseason for him of getting of getting of getting a feel of that now he's he doesn't have to rely so much now eventually he could be the teacher of possibly a, a prospect of the Panthers and Mackie Semiskevich come next season. So wait, wait to see on that one, but you mentioned Barkoff and, and how, and how it took a little bit for him to get going offensively. So now that will be a great segue to compare the trajectories of their, of their journeys uh, to, to getting their six year deals and, and all. So we're going to discuss that next here on the locked on Florida Panthers podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors and Passion, Drive, and Patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether it's a speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for number, your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the price you want, it's easy to make your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to this Friday of July 5th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. And you're watching and are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Had to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Lockdown Sports today. A free 24/7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Lockdown Sports today brings you the can't miss analysis, opinions and news. Streaming 24/7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, Nick, uh, I, w- I want to do a little bit of a comparable uh, between Anton Lindell and his current deal that he just signed and something in relation to the the captain of the Florida Panthers and Alexander Barkov. And just looking at this, hey, uh, I, I've been I said a few weeks ago that I'm I I, I don't want to overuse the term baby Barkov because he is his own person. But based on the trajectory and the and the contract uh, term that he had based on Barkov's first deal coming out of his ELC. Hey, maybe he is baby Barkov after all. But let's l- let's take a look at where Barkov's contract was at at the time that he signed. So Barkov's contract was signed in January of 2016, right when the play- Panthers were were uh, starting to make that that playoff run for. It was it was actually shortly after their uh, big winning streak a- after. So Barkov gets rewarded for a contract, uh, but. Uh, in in the next season he he misses uh he misses 21 games it, that 2017 season was a disaster season of, of course Gerard Gallant the taxi situation but then average a point per game of in every every se- in every season after that with the exception of one but the first year of Barkov's deal took up 8.1% of the cap starting in 2016 which was 73 million at the last year of that deal it was 7.2% of the cap but some context here Flat cap was in the last three years of that of, of that deal, uh, and w- um, also got some late um, got some selkie uh, love even in that first year of the contract. He would finish sixth too. So that's a that's a that was that is uh, Barkov's uh, trajectory uh, for for him, and for and for Florida, a lot of a lot of their cores locked up till twenty thirty. Barkov, Kachuk, Lundell till twenty thirty. Uh, Reinhardt and uh, for for him until 2032, and Gustav Forsling, and for for Lundell, and compared to Barkov, for for him, Lundell right now, his deal take a takes up 5.7 percent of the cap, nowhere near where Barkov's was at the time of signing too. So that's the encouraging thing. And let's say let's just play around here. That it's a three point five million dollar raise every single every single year from the time now until the time that the contract ends. Assuming there's no pandemic that knocks it that 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 uh, that 
delays the, the delays the start of a season. That contract, Nick, could g- get down to 4.5% of the cap. So when you look at those numbers and when you look at Anton Lindell's possible trajectory, not saying he's going to put the points like Barkoff, what, what, does that, what does that signal to you? Number one, that Bill Zito got a steal. I mean, if you look around the league and look at what players are getting and either their second line or third line centers, there's a huge disparity on how much they're getting paid. But also, if you look into relation how much the cap usage is being used, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, you look at uh, a Connor McDavid that we just saw in a dry saddle. I wonder how much cap they're taking up, you know. <laughs> or, or going to. Yes, exactly. And uh, jury's out on that one. Uh, not a lot of people are very confident right now about dry uh, staying with Edmonton, but uh, we're not here to talk about them. <laughs> I will say um, the fact that Zito was able to get him at $5 million over a period of six years where, you know, I believe me, you, and a lot of others were predicting this to be a three-year bridge deal for maybe three to $4 million. He was able to buy up a couple years of UFA and that he's only going to be paying his second line center $5 million. The win-win for both. Lundell gets the raise, but also the Panthers get cap security uh, going forward. And let's just say, you know, for whatever reason, um, you know, he's not really working out as a second line center. Uh, Panthers have a way of being able to still be okay with the cap situation. They can go out and shop for somebody. Uh, They could trade or you know, maybe they develop somebody else that could come in and take that spot. But um, as of right now, Dito has put the Panthers in the best position possible, um, you know, and basically signaling that this is his time to take over the 2C spot because you don't pay a second line center $5 million, Well, you don't pay a third line center, excuse me, uh, $5 million. So I, I think right there, that's the line in the sand. And uh, looking forward to seeing uh, how he, it turns out and how he plays. Which, which brings the elephant into the room of of who is going to be maybe maybe a guy who might miss out on 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 being part of the team in the future, and that's Sam Bennett. Uh, obviously, mm-hmm. he's getting he's getting a little older for for the Panthers. Obviously, Lundell has to have filled his spot multiple times due to, and we're not asking. Sam Bennett to change his style of play. His style of play is what got him here. The 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 big hit, grittiness, identity, and and also for Sam Bennett, just how great he gains the zone. Like I'm I'm consistently amazed of how how he does so at ease for for Bennett. That's what's definitely going to be missed after this year. So this signals after this year uh, likely is that Bill Zito is going to allow Sam Bennett to walk in free agency because if he's asking for a raise out, outside of his Four million and and being a part of the this Panther team, chances are they're going to go in a in a different direction. This is why you you try to win with guys on the cheap. I mean, it's just like a rookie quarterback in in the NFL. You try to mm-hmm. surround the, surround the pieces before it's time for that payday. The payday is here for for the majority of the guys uh, for the Panthers. The Panthers have less than one million in cap space to play with, but it looks like that. After this year, it's going to be it's going to be a little tight for the Panthers to e- even keep uh, even keep Sam Bennett because they still have to try to ways to try to keep Carter Hagee too, uh, who's going to be a free agent after after the season. And Bill Zito, he's in discussions with it, but it's it's look it's looking like at this point we pre- I predicted last year it, if if you have to choose one of Sam Reinhart or Brandon Montour, I I was saying Sam Reinhart. This year, if you have to choose be if coming up next season, if you have to choose between Carver Hagee and Sam Bennett, I think the Panthers have already put out signals out here, out there that it's going. It, their their priority is Carver Hagee. It definitely is. I mean, there wouldn't be reports out there, um, you know, before the uh, before free agency hits or just after the Cup final that you know they were already in discussions and that there was a contract offer on the table. Um, so I, I think the writing is on the wall for Sam Bennett, or this was a direct message to the Bennett cap saying, Hey, listen, this is the guy we're going to go with, or the, we're going to give the money to. So either it's your choice to negotiate, um, you know, a fair deal for the team to stay here if you want to win, or you're more than welcome to go see what you get on the open market, which let's be honest here, he will be able to get what he wants. You know, oh, yeah. he's proven that he's such a team player. Um, that he'll do what he needs to do to not only win, but also stick up for his team. 
Um, I think there's a few teams up north, uh, and I know that's everybody in the NHL, but specifically in the Canadian um, realm or even in the upper northeast that would love to have him and not play against him. So um, we'll see what happens. Uh, There's a lot that can happen in a year. Uh, There might be some cap movement that might happen, whereas, hey, uh, maybe there's some that come off the books or maybe there is an agreement with uh, maybe contracts being shipped out but we'll definitely see it just depends on for the panthers what's that sam bennett you know prefers more does he want to win or does he want to get paid yeah that and hey usually when you get your cup you uh, you already accomplished that and that and then it's time to cash in which i'm gonna think it's going to be the latter for sam bennett and credit to him and we're hopefully for him uh, and us, we're going to definitely embrace what looks to be his last year uh, in a Florida Panthers uh, sweater. Uh, but also for going back to Barkov, uh, he went through a lot of coaches uh, for, mm. for his time here. And the fact that he gained, uh, he had to deal with all the gauntlet of it paved the way for someone like Anton Lindell to have some stability. It's like that second generation family who moves uh, abroad to here. They, they go through the gauntlet. And and so that there's stability for their for their children, even though it's not that much of a gap that that uh, Barkley could be uh, his, uh, Lundell's dad. But you you get what I you get what I mean there. Uh, he he <laughs> definitely uh, paved that way for 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 him. But we're going to transition over to segment number three, where we're going to discuss more of of guys who have left the Florida Panthers uh, this offseason. And we're actually going to give a grade for Bill Zito's uh, free agent uh, free agency this offseason. We are going to discuss that next here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Third and final segment here on this Friday, July 5th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day here on a Friday. So a few uh, news in the world of some former Florida Panthers, uh, Vladimir Tarasenko has signed with the Detroit Red Wings uh, on a two-year deal just south of $5 million uh, each year uh, to reunite with Patrick Kane, uh, but in a different city now in Detroit as they are trying to take that next step of the Iser plan, even though they traded Jake Wallman, which still does not make a lot of sense to me, but still for, for, for Vladdy, got his payday. And even though he has multiple properties in South Florida, just no cap room for Vladimir Tarasenko to stay here after locking up Lundell. But also, Josh Mahura has signed a one-year deal with the Seattle Kraken, so he's going to get more of an opportunity there, too. And also, Lucas Carlson signed with the San Jose Sharks, so he's going to get an opportunity. So that's a great thing about a championship team. The guys go elsewhere in order to get an opportunity, finally, uh, for them. And congratulations to those uh, three. Uh, but, Nick... Going back to going back to Zito and free agency, we are at the end of the week, so a lot of stuff has happened. We discuss how the Florida Panthers are unlikely to use LTIR at the moment. Yes, things can change, and when it comes to when it comes to the Panthers and their grade for free agency, there's still a few. Yes, there's a few things possibly missing. Maybe you're missing another depth of defenseman, even even um, for for them, uh, and even. With, even though they signed Nate Schmidt and even though they locked up locked up uh, Anton Lindell, maybe you're going to have, maybe this also signals that Mackie Semiskevich is going to be part of the mix, maybe, uh, or maybe Yester Boquist is going to be part of that third line and Mackie starts in the AHL. But for Bill Zito's gr- um, free agency grade, coming off a of Stanley Cup <laughs> and also very little time to just think where you have to also be on the phone at the same time while celebrating, traveling to Vegas, <laughs> back and forth. I, I I can't I can't crap on Bill Zito for this kind of uh, free agency uh, period for him after coming off a Stanley Cup final run. Obviously, there would be more of a sense of urgency to create what create a championship winner. I mean, look at what happened to Edmonton. They kept a lot of their depth pieces. Henrik, Corey Perry added Victor Arvidsson to the mix uh, too. Then you know this is the difference of the winner going for things versus the versus the loser. So for me. With everything, even and even looking ahead for what the Lundell contract is going to look, I can't help but give. I can't help but I can't give him a bad grade. I have to give him a B uh, in this free agency period for what he's able to do, uh, and and that's and that's me being being generous for for him and and 
for the Panthers, they're like like I mentioned, which Jacob and I spoke about. This is about trying to get to the trade deadline and see what you can do uh, from there in order to add something. And just like like the Panthers were last season, trying to get through the first 16 games when Montour and Ekblad were out. It's just let's see how this team looks uh, and let's see how they mesh uh, together. So right now I'm going to say it's a beat for Bill Zito and this free agency period. How about you, my friend? So I'm actually going to go a little bit higher on a grade, and I'll explain why here in a in a second. Um, I'm going to give him about a B plus A minus area. So I put him like if you're you know in the American school system, you're looking at about an 89 to 90 percent um, grade. I'll give him. So uh, his parents would be very happy with that report card. Um, <laughs> but I have to say, uh, with being able to retool and put together. Uh, the lines or the players that he was able to bring in, considering what they had lost, you know, and Stenlin, who was a great face-off centerman, anchored that fourth line the whole year, great PKer. You bring in a guy like Nosik, who's actually mm-hmm. arguably a better face-off person, who does live and die by the PK. And honestly, I'll toot my own horn here. I wanted him about a year, year and a half ago. Um, just he played well in the Boston series against Florida. He was a pest. Um, you know, he was part of the reason why the Panthers weren't really able to get going on the power play or why they had an abysmal power play against Boston. Um, but I think he's going to slide nicely into that fourth line. And then you look at uh, the other players that they're able to bring in. So you got Nate Schmidt, somebody who was just bought out making $5.9 million. Mm-hmm. You get him for 800 k Love it. I mean, talk about bargain hunting. Bill Zito knows where to shop. Let's just let's put it out there. So um, and it's kind of funny. Nate Schmidt was traded to the Florida Panthers or the, the agreement was there back in 2020. And before he personally nixed it to go to Winnipeg. Funny how things come full circle and the Panthers win a cup. And now all of a sudden, like, yeah, I'm interested in signing there. Um, but then, you know, you have other things as uh, Boquist that's coming in. Uh, he had a highlight real goal uh, in overtime to beat the Panthers. I remember that play like it was yesterday. Very speedy winger can get on you on the four check. So, again, you're starting to see the type of players and the mentality that um, I almost said Talon. That was scary. Uh, Zito uh, is looking for, and it just looks like he is replicating exactly what he's been doing over the past couple of seasons. So, uh, with that thought in process, that's why I give him an 89 or 90% because he's staying with the plan and he's bringing in players again who are probably going to be able to buy into the system a lot easier and be able to play the system effectively. Yeah. And I also think about for, for Zito, a a term, a term that I use, especially when Lundell's contract was signed was this, this mentality of delayed gratification. Here's what I mean by that. You know, (laughs) you had five of just over five to spend. And you mm-hmm. want it, and you use it on Lundell, knowing that you don't have a lot of uh, draft capital at your your disposal. And and like I mentioned earlier, the projection of what the salary cap could be, assuming that the league does not shut down for another pandemic, uh, for him, it's ba- uh, and going into this off season when we were starting to see the projections of the cap, let's not forget what we spoke about is to not get comfortable with the amount with the with the amount of space versus the amount of contracts that are coming off the books too for the Panthers. So, this is setting up for a, the the next offseason where if there is a that that rise like we spoke about uh, maybe like 3.5 4 million, you know what the average contract uh, of of the amount AAV that the Panthers could hand next offseason, it's going to be 3.5 versus just on um, um just south of 2 going into this year. And yeah, you have a big contract coming off your book books in Ekblad coming, uh, assuming there's no cap clearing trade for him. Uh, so that's another thing for, for mm-hmm. him. So the Panthers could be also look, use that money to get younger uh, too on, on their blue line, unless Ekblad comes back at a major discount uh, for him. But you, you think about using that as saying, okay, let me hold off a little bit so I could even have a bigger off season next year, because you're going to have, and even if you, even if that 3.5, if you if you pay one person seven over over a, over over a seven year period each year, you still have a little bit of room to play with uh, for the rest of your roster to go to go bargain hunting once again when you know that your group is is locked up for for the Panthers too. So it's going to be 
it's, it's going to be a little tough to navigate from here until until then uh, because you still don't know what you have on your on your bottom two pairs with the blue line. Obviously, Belinskis had a great year uh, mm-hmm. before he was sent down. So that that's another thing for for the Panthers is because Belinskis is he's still kind of a wild card. Uh, let's let's also let's also not not forget that. Um, and it doesn't necessarily carry from one year to the next. But hey, so far so good from what we saw from Ubis. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, you, it's not often that you take a guy directly from Europe and insert him into your lineup early in the season, and he plays as well as he did. I mean, I believe he scored a goal. Actually, I think in the first five games of the season, he was up in the rush. He was playing exactly how Paul Maurice wants his defenseman to play. So, again, another guy that comes in, understands what his job is, and actually just comes in and produces, um, you know, which was a big thing for, you know, the start of last year with everybody that they did bring in. But the big thing to think about right now is while Bill Zito is – bargain hunting right now you know there's always a chance for him to take one of the core players that you know yeah they did win so they got over the top but maybe they're getting on the older side of things and you know they're not going to want to give him the money that you know he thinks he's going to be deserved you know it's not out of the realm of possibility for zito to find a trade partner and flip him for a younger version uh, of a player that he thinks that could definitely help put them over the top again um, he's shown that he has the gall to do that. And, you know, I would be absolutely not surprised if that happens next summer. Just because, again, you have all these contracts that are going to come up. You have to sign for Hagee. Uh, as we talked about, Bennett, most likely going to walk, but you don't know. Listen, like that's that's why we play the games, and that's why we let time kind of pass and let things kind of come to fruition. But there's other contracts on the on the team right now that you can take a look at and be like, huh what could I squeeze out of this and what can I get for it? And maybe some teams will be shy. They saw the Kachuk trade and they see how that panned out. And maybe some other GMs are like, Ooh, mm, I don't know if I want to do this. This, this, this young guy might be too good. And I'm, I'm going to get a guy who's already established, but getting older. I, I, I don't know if I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, that, and once again, this is a, this current situation for the Panthers is assuming there's no cap clearing trades. And that will be for, for us next week. Uh, maybe we will go back into a discussion of what the Panthers could do next. Could there be one in, in right before the season starts? Uh, because we have a whole lot in order to see if the Panthers are going to stay where they're at or they're going to try to go all in once again in running it back because there's there's still a few free agents out there. There's still there's still a D camp to do uh, next week, so there's still a lot to cover in 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 the next week here on the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. And then after next week, we're gonna go back to the Stanley Cup content uh, um, as this oh. is Summer of Champions for the Florida Panthers. So we promise that we will get back to some Stanley Cup content because guys are gonna have their days with the cup, and and it's, we're we're gonna be here uh, to discuss where where it's been. But, Nick, I want to thank you so much for joining me on this edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, discussing the extension of Anton Lindell and also Bill, Zito, this, Bill Zito's uh, summer, uh, as, as it has been. But tell everybody where they can follow you online, my friend. Mondo, thanks for having me on, and thank you for having me on for the uh, Anton Lindell extension talk. Appreciate it so much. Um, let's keep it going this summer. Um, you know, I've put it out on Twitter that I think that the Panthers should be America's team considering that we did fend off another Canadian team from winning the cup. So let, let's keep it that way. Exactly. Love the hat. Uh, but everybody, you guys can follow me on Twitter or X, however you want to call it at Prudentious zero. And I look forward to coming back next week. Awesome. My friend. Thank, thank you so much as always. And see you next week. See ya. And if you like what you're hearing, Please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Lockdown NHL Network, including Lockdown NHL, Lockdown Fantasy Hockey, Flip Livingstone, and Steel Roden, and Lockdown NHL Prospects. Thank you once again for making Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. So I'm Armando Velez with Nick Fairbanks. And you've been listening to the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We're your team. Every day.